a blessed evening to you out there welcome once again to another beautiful live broadcast this is our evening session on this uh, teachings that we've been looking into for uh, uh, a few days now we've been looking at the concept of uh, the all sufficiency of Christ we've been trying to connect to the heart of God in understanding the revelation of Christ the ascended Christ and of course to fully understand the revelation of the ascended Christ we have to understand the ministry of Jesus from his uh, earthly uh, 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 you know life when he was born how he was born how he grew and uh, how he fulfilled the intentions of the father I believe that this is a timely uh, message as we you know continue to celebrate Easter and tomorrow we will be uh, uh, rounding up tomorrow will be our final uh, teaching on this beautiful sessions that we have been looking into and I have said that tomorrow morning by God's grace we will be having a communion we've been having a, a, a communion time we'll be sharing communion with our friends and loved ones and family wherever you may be if you want to join us you'll be more than welcome to join us well tonight I just felt that we should continue amen to unpack the heart of God the mind of God regarding this excellent teachings uh, that I believe the Spirit of the Lord has brought before us in, in in regaining and of course enhancing our spiritual development and maturity let us pray before we begin tonight father once again we approach you we thank you for your love your mercy thank you for your truth that is has yes, been unveiled to us thank you for your counsel Thank you for the manifestation of your will and purposes, O oh God, that is, yes, uh, being revealed to us in this season in time. As we go once again, Lord, into your word, I pray that we will have a deeper and a clearer insight into your heart, into your mind. Your will, once again, will become clearer to us. Your word will be open to us. We'll have inroad, access into your heart. Your, your, your purposes will be revealed to us. Holy Spirit, you will take us even deeper into, yes, the very heartbeat of the Father regarding the nature and the position of the church. We thank you tonight. We bless you that you will grant grant us access to yes once again connect with your with your heart you will reveal Christ to us ah our heart will become even more aligned to the things that the father will have us know in this season in time we thank you we honor your holy name we bless you tonight lord that as this word goes forth there will be healing there will be deliverance there will be restoration muscle there will be reformation hearts will be yes uh, uh, refined and and, and fine tuned oh god yes to your will and counsel and desire we thank you lord tonight for your will that will prosper in our hand we bless your name in jesus name amen and amen well tonight once again i want to welcome you like i said uh, we will continue to you know believe god to help us to go further amen in the light of what the spirit of god amen has been emphasizing of course the emphasis has been on knowing christ having an understanding having a clearer insight of course that can only be done amen through the unveiling of 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 god's heart to us until the lord you know unveils his heart to us we, we will never be able to say that we have come into that point and place where you know christ is revealed to us like you know uh, uh, our lord jesus christ himself said regarding you know uh, 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 you know uh, peter when he, he proclaimed and declared that christ you know that who, who christ was when you know peter said you are christ the son of the living god jesus himself said he said flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but by my father in heaven he said and i say unto you you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hades amen will not prevail i felt that's a powerful statement amen and that is a turning point in the life of amen the the the, the life of peter and of course you know the concept of walking with the lord uh, you you will notice that our our walk with the lord amen deals with how uh, how we get to know the lord how we get to understand his heart his mind his will amen i mean jesus said to peter when when peter said amen uh, your christ the son of the living god jesus said to him flesh and blood did not reveal this to you 
that is to tell us that amen getting to know christ and of course his his position in our life and amen his assignment as a redeemer of the world is not something we can come into by you know the power of shared intel intellectual you know strength no we will never be able to come into the the, the revelation the, the 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 authority and the power of who christ is amen uh, without we having that you know a, a, a connection with the father like i said in uh, in, in, in the previous teachings that we have done that only the Father can reveal the Son to us and only the Son can reveal the Father to us. So it's important that we we, we keep this truth, amen, aligned with our heart, that we keep this truth alive, amen. So all that we've been talking about, amen, is about getting to know who Christ is. We want to have a deeper and a clearer, particularly we want to have a more intimate, amen, close relationship with Christ, particularly in this season where the enemy is doing everything, amen, to, 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 to try to paint a different image, a different picture of who Christ is. We want to go back to the word of God and find out. We want to engage, amen, the Father. We want to have a relationship with the Lord, amen, in, in uncovering, in discovering, amen, and of course in growing, amen, in the revelation of his son. And therefore we've been looking at the scripture, we've been trying to find what the word of God says, amen, about Christ and of course him being our all sufficiency, amen. We've been looking into that and I pray that tonight again that as we look into one or two scripture that we will have a clearer, a deeper and even amen, a more refined, a more robust understanding and revelation of who Christ is because more than ever before, friends, we need this revelation. We need to have a revelation of Christ. We need to have amen, a close, intimate, amen, you know, devotional uh, walk with God. We, 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 we've got to go beyond just some, you know, ritual. We have to go beyond just some, you know, third hand information. We have to know, amen, who Christ is because within the crisis of our day, it is the revelation of the ascended Christ that will give us, amen, stability, that will give us, amen, you know, strength and grace and tenacity, all of the things that we need, issues of faith and grace and wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all of the, the, the things that we look into regarding amen, the, the principles and the culture of the kingdom can only be revealed to us amen, through the revelation of Christ. Without Christ amen, in our life and without us maturing and growing in that knowledge, there is no way the things of the kingdom and the things of the spirit can become even more real amen, in our life. So we have to begin to zero into this you know, uh, uh, point. Who do men? Remember when Jesus made this point. It was just towards the end of his ministry. Yeah, it was just about entering Caesarea Philippa, and that was a powerful, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 metropolitan, you know, a uh, uh, position, state. All right, it, it, coming to that point and asking that question, Amen. He was actually dealing with certain philosophy, certain ideology that was very rife in his day, Amen. You know, that if you know, Caesarea Philippa was a port city, was a place, Amen, where you know, economy and ideologies, you know, are being passed from one point to another. That was a melting point all right but when jesus got to the gate the gate representing the position of influence and power amen the place where policies are made he asked the question and there are questions that the Lord is asking us today, particularly in times where we are faced with all kinds of issues. Amen. We are faced with all kinds of narrative. The church is faced with all kinds of challenges. We are faced with all kinds of, you know, misunderstanding and misrepresentation. He's asking us the same question tonight. Amen. As we celebrate, amen, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He's asking us, do you still have a revelation of who I am? Or the things that you call, amen, uh, Christianity and relationship as just become some religious ideology and some dogma that you're following who do men say the son of man is yes people might have their own opinions people might have their own ideology about who he is but he's asking you and i who do you say that i am and it's from this that we begin to dive into the word of God to find, to uncover, to, to, to discover for ourselves. Because the, 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 the reality is, if death knocks on your door tomorrow, would you be able to actually say that, amen, you're confident that, yes, you know that you're, you're going to make, you're going to make it to heaven, that, amen, his hands will be open to receive you. Or we this say to you, amen, uh, uh, depart from me, I know you not. We never had the relationship, amen. We never had a, a closeness, yes. I, 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 I know you claim you know me, but you know me from afar. You never really 
came close to me. You never had a relationship to you know with me. Who do men say that I am? But who do you say? There are two questions, and we have to tackle these questions. Amen. Let's not let's not settle for you know idea. Let's not settle for religion. Let's not settle for tradition. Let, you know because these are times where the Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation. Amen. Of the carriers of the image of the Son of God, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God, amen, are those whom Christ has been formed in them. Are those, amen, who have walked closely with the heartbeat of the Father, meaning that the Father has revealed his Son to them. The Father does not just reveal his Son to anyone. No. Uh, Look at, look at, look at what prompts, what prompts, amen, the revelation of Christ, hallelujah, to Peter. He asked the question, who do men say that I am? Some say, amen, you are one of the prophets, Jeremiah. Some say you are even John the Baptist. He asked his own disciple, who do you say that I am? Jesus, uh, Peter replied, you are your Christ, the son, the son of the living God. Peter replied, you are Christ. How did Peter, amen, got that information? How did he know, amen, that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? Because, amen, the father revealed Christ to him. And the next thing Jesus said was, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. So the, the church, which is you and I, is built, amen, on a personal, intimate, amen, relationship. Hallelujah. This relationship that we have with Christ is what reveals the spirit of the son of God to us. Amen. <laughs> we, we, I mean, people walked with Jesus. His disciples walked with him, but they, they never really got to know him. Hallelujah. As the son of the living God. Then a lot of a lot of people know him, amen, based on several, you know, several understanding. But to say he's the son of the living God, that was a different ball game. And only the father can reveal that. And this is what, amen, we are seeking to understand that until we begin to walk in such a proximity, in such a way, amen, with the Lord, such that he begins to share with us the secret of his heart. He begins to reveal to us, amen, who his son is. Friends, we do not have hope. Our hope is anchored, amen, on the ascended revelation of Jesus. Our hope cannot be anchored, amen, just on, amen, yes, uh, 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 the miracle that Jesus did, the healing that Jesus performed, amen, the signs and wonder that we see. I mean, they, they, are, they, they are prophets and they've been prophets, amen, who have done almost the same thing that Jesus did, yes. So what differentiates Jesus, amen, from others who have come, amen, in fact, those who have come in his name but do not represent him and those who have come out after him, you know, claiming that they know everything. Listen, is the fact that, amen, Jesus is the son of the living God. As elementary as this may sound to many of us, yet it is the heart, is the core. It is the very foundation that forms, amen, the structure of our spirituality. If we miss this, we miss every other thing. Do you know who he is to you? Or you've been persuaded by some dogma, by some tradition? All right. So Colossians, amen, Paul began to address this issue in the book of Colossians. The son is the image. The son is the image of the invincible God. The firstborn, amen, over all creation. Yes, verse 16. For in him all things. So the, the revelation of who Christ is, amen, then leads us, amen, to his power to his authority, to his position, hallelujah, and to his ability as a sovereign one. He is the first, hallelujah. Verse 16 says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All right? Then he went for them. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's stop there. I, I want to quickly jump to, you know, Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. This is very profound. I was reading this, I think, uh, 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 early hours today. Now, listen to this. Philippians chapter 2, the, you know, verse 5 says, you know, Paul said, I was circumcised, amen, 
Now, he's, of course, he's talking about he's, he's, he's laying a man a foundation, a man, in terms of getting to, you know, uh, uh, uncover, recover, understand who this Jesus is. He says, he says, I was circumcised when I was eight years. This is uh, the New Living Translation, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I was circumcised because he's going somewhere. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. Amen. I am I am pure blooded citizen of Israel, amen. A, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm I'm going somewhere. Let's continue to you know to look at this, amen. It says a real Hebrew, amen. If there ever was one, hallelujah. I was a member of the Pharisee who demanded uh, who 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 demanded amen the strictest obedience, amen, to the Jewish law. Paul was addressing something here. And then he went further. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at, let's look at verse 6 of that same scripture. I'm reading Philippians chapter 2. It says, I, I, I was so zealous that, amen, I earnestly persecuted the church. And as, as, and as, for, and as for righteousness, amen, I, I, I obeyed the law without fault. Without fault. Let's look at verse, verse 7 of that same scripture. I once thought, amen, I, listen to this. It says, I once thought these things were valuable. It's going somewhere. He said, I once thought these things that he had just listed, amen, yes. You know, circumcised on the eighth day, born into the Jewish, you know, culture and all of that, amen. A Pharisee of the Pharisee, like the, you know, uh, all King James will say. It says, I once thought that these things, amen, were valuable. But now, amen, I consider them worthless because, amen, because of what Christ has, has done. Now, this is very, very powerful where you consider, amen, you know, the position of being a Jew. Now, what I'm, what I'm heading at or what I'm trying to, you know, lay, amen, for us as, as an understanding, as a foundation to this truth is the fact that, amen, we, we need to know Jesus from an ascended position, from a position where the father himself revealed him and not just from a position where his jewish you know race or tradition amen introduced him and that's important but it's not as authentic as when amen we have what is called amen a personal intimate relationship when we have a, a revelation of who he is he said i, I he said he, he says he says I, I i once thought all of these things that i have acquired this position this this you know a uh, uh, religious if you will a, a, a position of, a, of of influence and an authority amen i once thought all of this amen were positioned that were valuable it says until amen I, I i came to know jesus then i realized that these things are what are worthless because of what christ has done so if we have not experienced jesus if the jesus that you know amen is a jesus, is a jesus that has been introduced to you by tradition amen by the ideas of men by the philosophies of men it will be very at price for you earlier to go on to the next level of understanding and working in the reality of God's you know prophetic plan for your life because everything that we 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 we, we represent as Christians as believer amen is hung on the revelation of Christ and this is what I mean when I talk about the all sufficiency the sufficiency of Christ in our life amen is built is established amen on the revelation of the ascended Christ who do men say that I am so Paul is a very good example, amen, to compare and contrast, amen, his, his Jewish position, amen, his, 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 his calling into the, into the order, into the sect of the Pharisee, amen. I mean, these were very zealous people, yet Paul said, when I met Christ, all that I've received, all that I've acquired, all that I have achieved, all that I've become, amen, within the Jewish, you know, community and the Jewish race, amen, is worthless, hallelujah to what Christ has done. Verse 8 says, Yes, everything else is worthless when I compare, when I compare with the infinite value of knowing Christ. When I compare the things, amen, that I have achieved as a Jewish citizen, amen, compare that to what Christ have done. Compare that to the infinite value 
of knowing. That is the key word of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Knowing Christ Jesus must become a journey, must become a passion, must become a longing, must become a desire for us. Not knowing some traditions of men, not knowing some dogma, not knowing some idea, not knowing some, you know, system, not knowing some, some rights. Amen. There's so many things that we have known. Amen. Around the things of God, around religion, a religion and ritualism, but yet we have, we have not come into, amen, that scope of knowing. Because the moment we begin to know Christ, not just his power. It, it, there's a big difference about amen seeing the power of God and acknowledging that power. There's a big difference, you know, it, it, about you know getting to hear about the things that you know God has done for us, amen. Comparing to how we have come in contact with Him. When when Paul, amen, contacted the Lord on the road to Damascus, you see, there was a turnaround, there was a turning point in his life. And to me, I feel this is something that we must re-emphasize in the church, in the body of Christ today. Because uh, moving on, going on, you know, advancing into the next realm, into the next reality, into the next purpose of God for our life. I tell you, we will need to have a deep and a better, a clearer, a more refined, a more robust understanding of who Christ is. Or else the crisis of our day, the crisis of life will sweep us away, amen, like a flood. Who do men say that I am? He went further. It says, for the sake, amen, for his sake, I have been, I have been discouraged. Discarded, I mean, for his sake, I have discarded everything else. Amen. Amen. Counting it all as garbage so that I could what? I could gain. I could claim. I could enter. I could access the revelation of Christ. This is Paul talking here. He began this argument, amen, as, uh, as him being a Jew, which is a big deal in those days. Being a Jew is a big, big deal. Amen. But Paul said, when I came to the knowledge of Christ, all of the things that I've acquired and I've known, amen, as, as a Jewish citizen, and then as a, you know, as a Pharisee of the Pharisee, who studied under Gamaliel, he said, all of those things, I count them as garbage. I count them as worthless. It's like saying you, you've learned, you've studied so many things. You've gone to, you know, your, your Princeton, you've gone to your Harvard, you've gone to your Oxford, you've, you've been to all kinds of places and you've acquired so much knowledge, amen, about life and about things, amen. And, and Paul said, all of those, I discard them, amen, to apprehend, to know Christ. It's a lifetime, amen, you know, project to get to know him. The moment we have that initial amen, knowledge of who he is, we never turn back. You see, I doubt if people truly have that initial knowledge. I think a lot of people met religion, tradition. We met all kinds of things, amen, that, you know, that, that wowed us. We met all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, idea that sound nice. You know, I, I, I've, I've been into, you know, certain groups where, you know, they talk about so much of theology and 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 mysteries and all kinds of things around all kinds of things but they never really get to talk about who christ is and the revelation of christ is the center point of christianity when we don't know christ ah uh, friends we have exposed ourselves to big time deception this is the reason i mean have you how many people have asked themselves how did the church get to this level how did we get to this level, amen, of deception that we see the kind of things that has been happening? We see the kind of men coming out, amen, in the name of Christ, doing things that are not even in the Bible, things that are totally, amen, outside, amen, the word of God, things that are totally, totally contradictory to the, to the truth, and yet we call it church. How did we get to this point? Well, we, we shouldn't think far. 
because the foundation of what we define, amen, to be a relationship with God, amen, was never God. You see, it's not, it's not, it's not, you know, a, 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 a rocket science to, to look at a person or a minister or a church and, and realize that, wait a minute, the Lord is not here. Because the Bible says by their fruit, we will know them. By their fruit, we'll identify. But like I always say, you see, if you take that scripture on a face value, you'll be making a, mi a mistake. Because how do you identify a fruit that, amen, you have not experienced? How do you testify of something? How do you say that is wrong if you do not know, amen, what is right? You see, the reason why people will sit, amen, in, a, in, in certain places, in certain churches, in certain ministry, amen, that are lying to them, deceiving them, or right, it's for the fact that the people themselves never get to know the truth. They have not been exposed to the truth. So, amen, if somebody lies to you, you buy the lie. In fact, you buy the lie, you know, with high price. Why? Because you, are, you yourself, you have never tasted You've never, you know, enjoyed, you have never come into, amen, who Christ is. You, you have not come into an understanding. You have not sought him out. Hallelujah. When you talk about having a revelation of Christ, you have a revelation of something else. Amen. In fact, Jesus himself said, amen, before, before he, he comes back, there will be many, there will be many Jesuses, there will be many Christ, false Christ that will be coming. Why would there be false Christ? And why would there be false Christ if the if 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 amen if people know the truth? Meaning that amen falsehood will thrive where there is what ignorance. Where there is ignorance, hallelujah, falsehood will thrive. I'm talking about us, the church, returning back to the point of the place where we get to know who Christ is so that we do not, amen, expose ourselves to deception. Secondly, so that we are able to carry out, we're able to effectively live our life the way the Lord will have us live it and not the way some man or tradition, amen, dictates it. These are things that we have to understand. The level of the of, of deception in the church is so is so is so high to the point that you know men, people are asking themselves, can we actually get out of this? We will get out of this when you begin to hear teachings, more teachings like this. All right, rather than hear, you know, your, your breakthrough is coming, you know, your miracle is coming. Miracles, amen, are the children's bread. The Bible says. There are teachings that we should be teaching the body of Christ. If we want to see the church restored, God gave us a 10 years plan. Part of that 10 years plan God has given to us, hallelujah, and we are seeking to adhere to that truth and make sure that we are ready for the next season, amen, is to return back, amen, to the true authentic revelation of Christ so that in the midst of the crisis and in the midst of the lies and the deception that will be taking place, that will be increasing, we can have a solidity because guess what? The Lord is shaking everything that can be shaken. That shaking will speak into our sense of understanding, our concept of revelation. Amen. That shaking will impact and affect, amen, our position of truth. That, that shaking will affect every area of our life. And God, God help us if we are built, amen, on a shaky foundation. And this is the reason why I'm sounding like, you know, like a mad prophet, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm repeating, it's like I'm repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again. Yes, it's for a reason. This truth must sink down. Because you cannot build your walk, your relationship with Christ on your feelings. You can't build it on, you know, on the dogma, on, on the ideology of man. You can't build it, amen, on your denomination. You can't build it, amen, on the opinions of men. You can't build it, amen, on democracy. You can't build this thing, amen, on, 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 on what people you know think and say you can't build it on half truth you've got to build it amen on the full amen scope of the, the the revelation of the father about the son for his sake i have discarded everything else for the sake of what for the sake of christ for the sake of knowing christ counting counting everything that i've acquired amen from my old position, from my old religious position, as garbage, as dung, some translations say, that I may gain Christ. That I may gain Christ. Now, today we want to gain something else. It says, I'm become, amen, 
and become one with him. It's not enough just to gain Christ. Paul said, my desire is to what? Is to become one with him. Is to become one with him. Amen. I no longer count on my own righteousness. Remember when he began, he said regarding righteousness, the righteousness of the law, flawless. Now he's saying in the same chapter, amen, he's saying to us that he no longer counts on his own righteousness, amen. He, he says, I no longer count on my own righteousness, amen, through obeying the law, rather, I became, amen, righteous through faith in Christ. I become righteous through faith. <laughs> how, 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 how clear is the matter of faith to, to you? How clear, amen, is this issue of faith? They that must come to God, the Bible says, must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not this. The scripture says, amen, they that must come to him, not to something else. They that must come to him. It's a person that we are coming into. It's a relationship that we are coming into. It's a life that we are coming into. Not, 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 you know, a, a ceremony, not religion, not traditions of men, not the, you know, activity that is given to us, hallelujah, to replace, amen, the quest of knowing him. You know, in the church, we like activity. We like a lot of activity to replace, amen, the place of questing and searching and pursuing. Because when people begin to pursue Christ, <laughs> a lot of things are going to happen that we don't want. They that must come to him must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligent, diligently seek him. And all of that is done through faith. You see, there are teachings that we got to do that will boost our faith. Not teachings that we do that places our faith on a false hope. Not teachings that we do that positions the faith of the people on a lie. Ah, uh, come on. Knowing Christ is the heart cry of the Father. In fact, the Father wants to reveal the Son to us. Just as the Son wants to reveal the Father to us. I became righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way, amen, of making us right with himself. Depends on faith. It depends on faith. Many have placed their faith on something else. Many's faith are built around something that, amen, will not bring them to arrive in God. Many have built their faith on things that would not, amen, allow them to arrive in God. When your faith is built on something, amen, that only allow you to possess material earthly things, then you've built your faith in vain. You've built your faith, amen, on what less material things. You've built your faith on things that are not eternal. Remember, the Bible says our works will all be tried by fire. And God help us. When the fire begins to test our faith. I pray that our faith. Amen. Will stand the test of time. I became. Righteous through faith. In Christ. For God's way. Of making us right himself. Depends. On faith. A lot of lofty things that we're talking about that we're hearing within the body of Christ. And those things are not built solidly on these sound biblical fundamentals. Allow me to, 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 to draw your attention again to these fundamentals. Allow me, amen, to draw your attention again to these basics. Is Christ in view? Is Christ your, pers your, your, your perspective?
to engaging yourself, your life, your community? Or have you thrown Christ away and you've embraced, you know, many things that, that sound righteous, that sound religious, that sound spiritual? The essence of our spirituality is the image of Christ, is the person of Christ, is the value of Christ. I mean, as we continue to celebrate Easter, let's begin to think about who Christ is to us. What Christ means to us. Let's go back and ask ourselves, do we still have the fear of Christ in our life? Basic truth. Am I still living my life based on the promptings? Based on the voice of Christ? Based on the leading of Christ? Based on the, 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 the desires of Christ? Or is Christ just an idea while I do my own thing? There's a lot that we can benefit, that we can really truly benefit when we begin to let Christ lead us and guide us and instruct us. Hallelujah. I want to know Christ. Is a cry of the heart of Brother Paul. I want to know Christ and experience. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power earlier that raised him from the dead. Tomorrow people are going to be celebrating oh, resurrection day. But do we have a revelation of what this means? Do we truly, can we truly say amen that we have been resurrected with Christ and we are seated with Christ in heavenly places? Remember, what we're doing this, you know, few days is just a celebration of what has already happened. That which has happened, is it real to me? Is it real to you? That, oh, we want to hear deep revelation about the prophetic, about eschatology. We want to hear deep revelation about when the world will come to an end. We want to hear, you know, deep things about, you know, how accurate our prophecy is. We want to hear revelation, amen, about how we can heal people and how we can bring, you know, ourselves into prosperity and, and claim all of this. And friends, those things are good, but they are all edged on. There's no prophecy greater than the revelation of Christ. There's no prosperity. There's no healing, deliverance that could be greater, hallelujah, than getting to know. You see, when you begin to know Christ and you begin to develop in that knowledge, <laughs> things begin to change about your life, your values, your worldview, your belief system. Your sense of understanding, your sense of truth begins to change. Confidence and boldness, hallelujah, becomes manifest in your life. You are no longer at the beck and call, amen, of, of people. You are not at the mercy. You, you are no longer, amen, an accident. You are no longer a victim. There's something about the revelation of Jesus Christ in your life that changes your appearance. I want to know him. It's a quest, it's a desire. When you, when you read this writing and you look at the things that Brother Paul you know, writes about in his epistle, you will understand why God could commit those things into his heart. Because first of all, he, he had a desire to want to know Christ. The Bible says the pure in heart will see God. To see God is to see his heart, to see his mind, to see his desire, the way he does things, to see his perspective regarding nation. I want to know Christ and also experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. If you experience that power, 
Nothing can keep you in the grave. Nothing can keep you down. No man, no system, no tradition, no opinion, no idea, no ideology, no system can keep you down, can keep you locked down. You always bust forth. You always come out. You always express, hallelujah, the savour of God, the life of God, the beauty of Christ, hallelujah. But it's not enough just to know him. I said it's not just enough to know him and experience this mighty power that raised him from the dead. Paul says, I also want to, hallelujah, experience the suffering that he suffered. I want to suffer with him, sharing, amen, in his death. Remember, he, he said first that he wants to know, listen to this, I want to know Christ. And experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. It was after this revelation that he went further and then said, Amen. I also want to suffer with him. So you can you can be resurrected with him. You can share, Amen, in that resur resurrected power and still suffer with him. You would have thought he would have said, Well, I want to suffer with him. And share in his death. Then talk about. Amen. I want to resurrect with him. He talked about resurrection first. He talked about the mighty power. That raised him from the dead. He talked about knowing him first. Before he went into. Hallelujah. Suffering with him. I hope you get this. It's not a mistake. It is not a mistake. You can have the resurrection, the resurrected power. You can have, amen, the revelation of Christ in your life. And yet you find yourself in a state where you're suffering. But this suffering, amen, is because you know him. Hallelujah. Point that I'm making. Because, you know, we have been taught that when you're in a state where, you know, things are contrary. You, you know, situations are around your life. They'll say it's because you don't know him. They say it's because you don't have faith. Now he has the faith. Now he know him. Now he has a resurrection, resurrected power. But he said he wants to be. He wants to experience, amen, that life of suffering with Christ. Isn't that amazing? That knocks away our theology. The wrong theology that we have been sold in the church. Hallelujah. All right. Let me see what uh, our people are saying. All right. Yes. Knowing Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my dear sister. Uh, uh, Deirdre. Thank you for joining us. Deirdre. Uh, uh, Edward. Thank you. Yeah. Knowing Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Knowing Christ and becoming one with him is everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Knowing Christ and becoming one with him is 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 everything that's the that's the benchmark of all revelation is the height of all truth hallelujah sister tina yeah indeed so coming into coming into him amen fully and completely is in surrendering absolutely when we have not surrendered to christ how do we even begin to come into him you see, our mindset tells us when we surrender to Christ, when we give everything, then we are going to be missing something. I don't miss anything. We're not missing nothing. In fact, when we surrender to him, amen, we, then we begin to see how he himself surrendered to us all. All things. He said, all things are yours. But you can't claim all things if you have not surrendered. If you have not come into him. If you have not come into his, into his life. If you have not come into oneness. Paul said that I, that, I, that I may know him and become one with him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Bumi. Amen. We have to begin to walk in this truth. Because these are the things that will keep us in the next 50 years. If Jesus tarry, we will still be waiting for him. Hallelujah. In this understanding. Because you see, this revelation, they, this truth, they never go into, uh, uh, they never go out of fashion. There are certain truths that have gone out of fashion. Excuse me, certain so-called revelation, they've gone out of fashion. 
But when we come to Christ, hallelujah, and we begin to grow in him, we are never out of fashion. We are never out of fashion, hallelujah. We we are always at the at the state, amen, of relevancy. Because uh, relevancy is to know Christ and to continue to grow in him. Hallelujah. And of course, to be conformed into his image, into his likeness, even in suffering. I want to know Christ, he says. And experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Sharing in his death. So that, amen, so that one amen, one way or the other, I, I will what? Experience the resurrection from the dead. This is beautiful. This is a powerful truth. That when they anchor our hearts, we remain anchored even in the days and seasons of crisis. When this truth anchors, amen, our soul. Listen, you will be anchored, amen, in the day of the stormy weather, in the day of the stormy, you know, uh, 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 you know, sheep. Your, your sheep will remain. Your life will remain. Nothing will shake you. Nothing will move you. This is a truth that I, I believe that if we walk in it, it will keep us. And this is why Paul was able to say, Christ is the son. Is the son. And the image of the invisible God. Is the first is the firstborn over all creation. For in, for in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible or invisible. And that led me amen, to Philippians that I read. So, knowing this Jesus means that we have to shift away. You see, you can't know Jesus and be knowing so many things that, you know, have been sold to us as a distraction in the, in, in, in the so-called, you know, church. There are things that we are doing that are distraction to knowing Christ. There are things that we have involved ourselves with that are basically a distraction. It, they, are, they are placed there. They are strategic to, to distract, to derail us away from knowing. You see, knowing Christ is going to take a lot of work. Because you will have to, first of all, amen, uh, bring your soul to comply with a quest and the search for Christ. You have to bring your soul to that point. Because the soul is not just going to follow you and say, yeah, let's go know Jesus. No, no, no. The soul is going to fight you, amen, till the bitter end. Because the soul knows that, amen, it is to its disadvantage for your spirit to begin a quest after Christ. So the soul will give you all kinds of things, will bring all kinds of things. Sometimes the soul might even bring prosperity across your way just to distract you from knowing Christ. So you have to be able to identify what are the distractions. What are the things that the enemy can bring across my path that can distract me, that could lure me, that could, you know, lead me away from my desire, my pursuit of knowing him. We've got to ask ourselves these questions. As basic as they sound, as elementary as they may sound, yet they are the foundation that holds our growth, our maturity, our development, amen, in the things of God. The kingdom of God is built on the revelation of Christ. Nothing else. The kingdom of God. Because uh, in among our apostolic community, oh, we, we are carried away with the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom is about a person. We can describe the kingdom and talk about the kingdom. Whatever we want to do, that's beautiful. As long as it is aligned with, amen, the revelation of Christ. When Christ is not in view, Every other thing that we pursue, that we seek, that we run after, that we chase after, will collapse. Because he's the center point. He's, he's, he's the center core that holds all things together. We just read it. 
He holds all things together. You want to be a successful man, a successful husband, a successful wife, amen. You want to succeed in your business, in your ministry, in your calling. You want to succeed, amen, in your assignment in life. You want to, you want to excel. You want to be highly, you know, uh, 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 influential in your purpose, in your calling in life. Get to know Christ. Get to know him. Is the way is the truth and he is the life he is the way he is the truth the truth to what the truth to whatever you're searching for anything you speak without the life of god is is nothing it will it won't yield every relationship requires a life every conversation requires that we speak from a position of life we can either speak from a position of life or be speaking from a position of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is either way. Our words could either be filled with life or be filled with empty knowledge. Knowledge that has no power to transform. Our churches can be full of intellectual knowledge and people talking about all kinds of things or we can have a church amen whose expression amen is geared and 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 and, and you know motivated through the life of Christ we have to amen begin to learn to eat from the from the fruit of the tree of life and that's 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 what the revelation of Jesus is all about. We have to establish, amen, our foundation upon, amen, the ascended life in Christ Jesus. He is the life, he is the way, and he is the truth. When this truth becomes ingrained, established in us, when this truth becomes part and parcel of our life, you will see how we will accelerate. Because that's the life he himself lived. Three and a half years he was done because he lived, amen, in accordance to the, 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 the manifestation of the fruit of the tree of life. Three and a half years he was done. Think about that. Things that we're struggling and hitting our head to try to understand and finish. You get to begin to know Jesus Christ. It will impact how you talk to people, how you see people, how you relate with people, how you befriend people, how you respect and honor people, how you bless people, how you correct people, you know, how you stand to defend, amen, uh, the truth. You, you get to know Jesus Christ. Teach people to know Jesus Christ. Let Jesus become magnified in the life of people and see things transform. Nobody will reject the true Jesus when amen it is when he is right rightfully you know presented father we thank you we honor you tonight again for such a powerful expression thank you lord for this truth that is built and established upon Christ eternal rock our rock of ages as we continue to celebrate Easter and remember the things that you have done, Lord, help us to live for you, to honor you and to glorify you in everything that we do. I thank you for the few brethren that have joined us tonight. May this word again steer their heart. Like Paul said, one thing I do is to know him. Oh, may we pray this prayer tonight, oh God, that our desire is to know you. Not, not just to know about you. We want to know you. And the fellowship of your suffering. Yes. We want to be found. Yes. In that reality of the power of your resurrection. Have your way. Lead us. Teach us. Show us. Guide us in the path of truth and righteousness 
may faith be awakened again in our hearts may your love overwhelm our hearts I bless you oh God for every man every woman out there thank you Lord that your church will become even more yes determined to search for you even though you are not far may we knock oh God upon the door of your heart in this season may we quest and, and search and seek after you may we find you oh God oh Lord we love you teach us to live for you hallelujah amen and amen Praise God. Well, so much. Uh, uh, we, we once again want to thank God for his word that has gone forth. I believe this few words that we have shared tonight. Amen. As once again, allow us to have. A, you can see there's no much that we're talking about than the revelation of Christ. Is is our all sufficiency. May this truth once again take root in our heart. Well, tomorrow in the tomorrow morning by God's grace. We should start broadcast around six o'clock, and uh, we'll have our communion. So, if you want to join us tomorrow morning for communion service, uh, uh, we, it's just going to be a short time just to break bread together and, and just celebrate what Christ has done for us. That would be awesome, right? So, tomorrow we're going to kick off by six by God's grace, amen. Yes, it's going to be an early morning thing, we're just going to do that, and then we can have a wonderful, blessed, you know, Easter Sunday. I think it's going to be wonderful. So have yourself a wonderful evening. Amen. Keep rejoicing in the Lord and keep praying that God, amen, will perfect all he has begun in your life. All right. Thank you so very much. My my, my eyeglasses is still not back, so they're still working on it. And that's why I'm looking the way I'm looking. But it is well. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Love you all. Good night. Thank you so much, everyone that joined us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Sister Bumi, Sister Tina, and of course, Sister Deirdre. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Love you. See you again tomorrow morning. Enjoy the evening. Bye-bye.